Hello everyone, my name is Jorge Sal. I'm the director of the Center for International Studies of the Catholic University of Chile, and I'm delighted to participate in this interesting conference about Latin America and regional trade, a view from Asia on current opportunities and developments. First of all, I wanted to thank the Cape Center and especially his director, Matthew Megar, for inviting me to a new activity. In the past, we have discussed about the regional trade and shared perspective from Chile and New Zealand, and we have discussed on the challenge on how can the region and New Zealand can diversify his, uh, its exposure to the trade around the world. The key in my presentation is how New Zealand and Latin America have worked together and the challenges for the future. I think that this year is an excellent opportunity to strengthen the work and to create more awareness of the importance of the ties or linkages between New Zealand and Latin America. Actually, New Zealand is hosting the CPTPP or Trans-Pacific Partnership, Partnership this year and in 2021 was the leader of APEC. What does this mean? It represents, from my perspective, an active interest from New Zealand to involve in Trans-Pacific region, the most dynamic economic area in the world nowadays. From the Latin American side, there are some opportunities to advance or to progress in this goal to create or to keep developing the ties between New Zealand and Latin America. Let me start with two countries. Chile, after a long political debate and some controversy, last week approved and ratified the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I think that it was a good decision in the line to deepen the relations in the Trans-Pacific area. And secondly, another country, Uruguay. Uruguay is promoting a more, an op a more open approach to trade policy, and it's starting to uh, looking for different areas and countries in the other side of the world to create or to start negotiating free trade agreements. Move now to the Latin America. Latin America is looking from, for the Pacific, is seeking this area of Asia Pacific. First, the Pacific Alliance is, has been the most successful integration initiative in Latin America over from more than one decade. New Zealand is an associate state of that bloc and we expect that New Zealand can conclude uh, its negotiation with the Pacific Alliance, like Singapore last year. The CPTPP, secondly, as I mentioned, this is the most ambitious FTA in the Asia Pacific, which means a better access to markets, higher labor and environment standards, more modern rules, and the incentive for being part of new global value change in a context of the near-shoring or reshoring of the different uh, value chains that already has been so dependent to China. In the geopolitical context between U US and China, the CPTPP is a way to diversify our international exposure, our trade relations re regarding to New Zealand and Latin America, since United States and China are not part of this FTA. At the same time, the CPT CPTPP, from the view of New Zealand and Latin America, is a way to facilitate the integration of new Latin American countries in the Trans-Pacific area. For, its, for instance, Ecuador, Uruguay, and Costa Rica are seeking 
to be part of the CPTPP. That means that this FTA has the potential or has the capacity to see, to, to become a channel to promote the integration from more countries of Latin America at the Trans-Pacific area, including New Zealand. And finally, in the FTAs, the DIPA, the Digital Trade Partnership, the Digital Partnership uh, is a new model of agreement that focus on the new economic area. And these DIPA are part Chile, New Zealand and Singapore. So in these three examples, DIPA, Pacific Alliance and CPTPP, we can realize the interest in concrete of strengthening the linkages between Latin America and the Pacific area. To end my presentation, what are some challenges to move forward? Primary, the geopolitical context. We know that China and the United States, the most powerful countries in the world, are in a strategic rivalry, technological, financially, economic, and potentially military. We need to see ways and alternatives to diversify our trade relations and try to reduce our dependence on China and the United States. Some of, this, of those examples I mentioned, like the CPTPP, are ways to advance in that orientation. Secondly, the investment side. We are not talking only about trade. The economic relations are also about investment one. The green economy needs investment. Latin America has a tremendous potential from the green and more sustainable economy. This part of the world has copper, lithium, cobalt, cobalt. There are some commodities critical to develop the, a more sustainable economy. The potential of, uh, of greener way, uh, uh, ways of energies are in Latin America. So the question is, how can we boost more investment from New Zealand or from other countries here in Latin America? And finally, as we discussed a few years ago in New Zealand, hosting by Cape Center. What will be the role of small and medium states and the need or the importance of multilateralism to reinforce our roles, New Zealand and most of Latin American countries, in dealing with a more uncertain global context? Latin America has much to learn and understand from New Zealand. The idea after this conference and our objectives is how New Zealand can size and take advantage of the opportunities from a big potential region like, like Latin America. Thank you very much and have a good conference during the day.